Hi, I'm Ben. And I'm Lucas. And we are two aspiring filmmakers making unnecessary commentary on famous movies. Each week, we will randomly select a film to analyze, discuss, and review. We will select the film at the end of each podcast, so you will have ample time to watch the movie before the next episode. We are slightly qualified film students. Hello. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Here we are. To slightly qualified film students. This week, yeah. we are looking at the 2013 Coen Brothers film, Inside Lewin Davis. Uh, Inside yeah. Lewin Davis. Our first Coen Brothers film. Um, Hopefully, first of many. Absolutely love Coen many. Brothers movies. We got movies. a few on the wheel. Um, yeah. And a few on the wait list, too. Yeah, I, uh, well, you know, I gotta say, I have a very, like, love-hate relationship with the Coen brothers. Um, I've seen, I would say I've seen a good, really? like, 70% of their filmography. Um, I've it's not that I don't, stuff. it's not that I don't like some of their films. I just feel like a lot of their films are kind of forgettable, uh, in my opinion. Hmm. I mean, of course, they have some, like, masterpiece films, like The Big Lebowski, No Country for Old Men. Um, I would consider this one one of their better films, too. Uh, Fargo, but you know some of their like other films like Burn After Reading, uh, Hail Caesar, ba- Ballad of Buster Scruggs. Um, really, I, I liked know, Ballad of their... Buster Scruggs. Eh, I thought it was good. Okay, I went into Ballad of Buster Scruggs thinking it was going to be like a cool Coen Brothers film, nah, and instead nah. I got like eight short films, and I wasn't really into yeah. it. Yeah, but I'm... um, I don't know. Yeah. Some of their films, like I enjoy them while I'm watching them, but then I kind of just forget about them. Like Hail Caesar is a good one for me. Like I watched Hail Caesar, I was like, "This is a fun movie." I was enjoying it, but then I don't know. It just like it doesn't have that it factor for me. It kind of it's just a cool movie, and that's that. Um, yeah, I'd say. And then yeah, sometimes they like make some really amazing movies. Yeah, Oh Brother Where Art Thou is definitely. Mm -hmm. a really good one to check out uh if you haven't seen it already super good good definitely memorable also barton fink earlier stuff Mm -hmm. yeah super memorable also john goodman is in both those i love john goodman so funny (laughs) Uh, yeah definitely one of my favorite comedy actors uh yeah he's solid Mm -hmm. he's in this too i think he's great in this um, this actually, yeah, it's got a small this part. movie has a really good cast. It does. Um, it has a great cast, um, and it's all kind of before they were famous too, because Oscar yeah, Isaac like, and Adam Driver hadn't been in Star Wars yet. Yeah, uh, Oscar Isaac, I, Oscar Isaac, Adam Driver, Carrie Mulligan, all kind of like up and coming at this point in 2013. And uh, then I mean, Carrie Mulligan JT. had a bit. She had Drive. <laughs> I mean, Oscar Isaac was in Drive too. Her, him, and Carrie Mulligan. Yeah. So they had. Yeah, I, but Drive wasn't a huge hit, honestly. So no, it yeah, wasn't. I think this is uh, a solid cast. Um, but yeah, I got a plot summary here. I can read. Uh, Great. Lewin Davis, a former merchant marine, is a folk singer from Greenwich Village, New York City. He struggles to maintain his artistic independence against the commercial needs of the music industry. I think that's actually a really good uh, plot summary of this film. Yeah. It is. It's a great plot summary. Uh, because yeah. this movie is really... It's a very simple kind of character study. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just a kind very of like following snippet around of life the, the struggling of... musician as he tries to make it. Mm-hmm. Um, just from couch to couch kind of thing. Uh, there's yeah. nothing huge. You don't see like his relationship endeavors firsthand, at least. Um, it's really right. just about him yeah. and the music. Does. Yeah, I think it's very different than a lot of their films. It's, mm-hmm. I think, yeah, it has a different vibe than a lot of their other movies. It's it's much slower paced. A lot of the Coen Brothers yeah. films are quite, like, fast, quite, like, lots going on. And this is a very simple, uh, fairly low budget. Not not insanely low budget, but definitely lower than most Coen Brothers films. I think it was $10 million. Um, Yeah, 10000000 And million. it's just kind of a relaxed... Um, character study and it's not something coen brothers do often but i think they made a like for something that isn't really in their ballpark they they did it really well and made a fantastic character study in my opinion um Mm -hmm. and yeah i mean this is pretty much the only coen brothers film that doesn't have roger deakins as the cinematographer 
Um, yeah. And and a lot I of people kind of judge the cinematography in this movie, but I, I actually love the cinematography I in this really movie. I really love the cinematography um, in this movie. And, I think you know, it's just on par it's not, with Deacons. Oh, yeah. Just because it's did. not Roger Deakins doesn't all of a sudden make the cinematography not good because actually the cinematographer who did this movie is also a very talented cinematographer. He did yeah. Amelie, which is arguably one of the most like beautiful films ever uh, as far as color theory goes. Um, and he did Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, which I will say time and time again is <laughs> the most beautiful Harry Potter film. And yeah. honestly, one of the m- most beautifully shot fantasy films out there. Um, and I mean, Bruno Del Bono has five Academy Award nominations. He's so. nominated for this film. I mean, people yeah. just, I don't know, just because it's not Roger Deakins, people kind of judge the cinematography. But the cinematography is uh, very beautiful and it works perfectly for the tone and feel of this movie um but yeah let's get into some standout scenes sure okay my standout scene uh is just the one i find the most entertaining in this film which is the car Mm -hmm. uh driving like scene between new york and chicago with john goodman uh, mm. I think that this sequence is like hilarious. Um, John Goodman's character is super funny. I think the cinematography is really great. Um, I love the vibes of it, but also I love like the little hints about Lewin Davis's character. You get just from his like sarcastic responses. Um, you get to find out why mm. he stopped being or having a partner. Uh, mm-hmm. And I mean, you just get to do it in this very comedic way. And uh, it just yeah. kind of is good character development. It's hilarious. It's the funniest scene in the movie, in my opinion. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I think that there's more meaningful scenes. But when I watched this movie, this was the scene that had me the most entertained. Uh, <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. I think I, I think I'm, I don't know. That scene, those scenes were probably my least entertaining parts. Not that I didn't like them. It's just, like, I felt they were a bit slower. Like, I was kind of, like, I don't know. Yeah. I also think that at the diner, the cinematography is really beautiful. Oh, yeah, that is is beautiful location selection, that diner. But, um, yeah, uh, my my standout scene, my favorite scene, is actually when he goes to see Ned Grossman in New York. And he plays that song for him. Um, Mm Mm-hmm. I think that's like a perfectly crafted scene of him like going there, giving him the record. He goes out and he like pours his heart and soul into this performance he gives for him. Uh, yeah. Really like sad, heartfelt song um, about like losing someone he loves, which is obviously you can imply that that's his uh, his, his partner. partner who killed himself. Um and yeah after doing this he's like on the verge of tears and then the guy looks at him and is like yeah i don't see any money here um yeah and basically just shuts him down tells him he's not going to make any money um and that kind of yeah. is the point where oscar isaac's character luluin davis just like basically gives up. gives up and i think yeah it's a really beautiful scene lighting wise really well acted mm-hmm. from oscar isaac and I love how that scene ended, too, with him being like, uh, my advice is, like, go get back together with your partner. And he's like, ah, great advice, and leaves. I just think it's it's yeah. a really good scene with, like, the dark comedy and also just, like, heartfelt drama. And it really showcases his acting in that scene. Um, and and what's even yeah. sadder, too, is this this movie ends with Lewin Davis watching Bob Dylan perform, who yeah. would then go on to make, like, tons of money off of the exact genre yeah exactly you know, lewin davis yeah. was doing so it just kind of mm-hmm. adds that extra layer of like damn he really was just ahead of his time <laughs> totally uh, totally and also yeah, yeah i mean i think that there were like better scenes than what i picked but i just picked the funniest one in my opinion yeah entertainment because, i mean for me yeah. entertainment wise i would say it's probably like i really like the recording session with him adam driver yeah and with adam Timberlake. driver that, that that scene cracks like adam driver just doing his ad libs in the background like i think yeah. that's such a funny scene i think on entertainment oh, level that's oh. probably yeah yeah <laughs> it's a funny scene um yeah. and then he's like yeah, who wrote okay. this and then yeah he's like justin timberlake's i, love the I gig, did man. oh i did oh. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah and then he signs away his royalties and 
Great, yeah. great scene. Um, yeah, okay, we got some audience questions, so we can do Amazing. those. Um, okay, Cohen's first feature collaboration with French cinematographer Bruno Del Bono. Do you think mm-hmm. Del Bono should have won that year, 2014, for best cinematography uh, because he did not win over Emmanuel Lebesgue for Gravity? Uh, I'm pretty sure that... Was that Birdman? Oh, it was Gravity. Gravity, uh, yeah. No, I don't think he should have won. Gravity has really good cinematography. <laughs> yeah, I agree. It's... Like, Inside <laughs> Lewin Davis looks really cool, and I don't even like Gravity. Mm-hmm. I think Gravity's kind of a stupid movie. But you have yeah. to give Lebesgue credit because it's just incredible uh, the way that movie looks. I mean, it, it puts you in that environment. Uh, like, I don't know. I, like, obviously, there's special effects, mad VFX work that went into that, too. But uh, I think Lebesgue totally deserved it that year and the next year for Birdman, too. Um, Lebesgue just kind of a beast. Yeah, I agree with you. I don't I don't like Gravity that much as a natural film, but it, it is beautifully shot uh, and quite groundbreaking for 2013. The shots they did in space with the long takes and stuff. Um, yeah. Even though the story isn't that interesting, in my opinion, I I, I definitely think it deserved best cinematography. Um, yeah. But yeah, this, I, this but film I mean, is I think also the Inside Lewin Davis could be overlooked, um, just to the due to the fact that it's not Roger Deakins. Uh, but I I don't know. There's just something really cool. Uh, they have like the browns and the oranges of, specifically of Lewin Davis's jacket that are like. Um, more saturated and present and then everything else is almost black and white kind of uh and it just right. gives that like really weird earth tony color palette that no country for old men kind of has uh and true grit so i mean i think that he was on to something but i just think tough luck if lubezki's in the in the competition next question in your opinion what does the ending of the movie imply in terms of where he's going to go from there? Uh, well, I think if anything, the ending implies that he's going to just do the same thing. <laughs> or maybe mm-hmm. maybe not uh, the exact same, but like I don't think it's like a loop. But um, I don't know. I would say that this is like just the sad tale of a singer who never made it and never will. Because, I mean, there's thousands of those types of people and he just yeah uh, yeah go back to working as a marine and you know live the way he's telling his mom he doesn't want to uh you know just surviving as he calls it uh yeah well the you know the guys like bob dylan will blow up i don't think if if the question is like does he have a happy ending I, i don't think so i don't necessarily think so yeah, I mean, I think he's growing as a person. Well, okay, the ending is the beginning of the movie, which I, I really like this mm-hmm. ending. But um, I think the actual metaphor for this ending is, yeah, he is in a loop. But there are little differences. Like, for example, um, the cat doesn't escape. Like, he makes sure the cat doesn't leave the apartment when he leaves that day. So there's there's a form of growth in this loop. Also, he sings a second song at the end of the film, which is much more uplifting uh and also like it's fairly well so it's it's like this very emotional um like he's he's basically saying goodbye to you know either music or you know saying goodbye to mike his partner there's a, there's a lot of stuff there but it's mm-hmm. it, i feel like that even though it is a loop there's some differences within that loop which is pretty cool so i think it does imply that yeah he is stuck in this and he's going to keep doing it or maybe he won't maybe he's going to quit and actually go join the navy but um he does you know he's growing a little bit as a person as it's going and i mean there's something there like the thing that's interesting about this film is even though it feels like it's over a long course of time it's literally over the course of like four days like um yeah it's even referenced when you know he comes back and she says it's on saturday and he's like oh yeah i went to chicago and it felt like a long time but it it wasn't (laughs) yeah and yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, when you think about it, it feels like it's been, you know, at least a couple of weeks, but it's, it's really over the course of a few days. Um, and yeah, that's why it's a really real snippet of life kind of film. It definitely has mm-hmm. kind of those like lost in translation, 
uh sofia coppola vibes which i like um yeah yeah okay so yeah those are our audience questions thanks for sending those in uh if you ever want to ask us questions even if it's not about the movie we put up a little poll on our insta stories um every friday so Mm -hmm. go there ask your questions whatever you want or just like comment on a post email us whatever all good we like these audience questions it's a fun part of the podcast absolutely Um, yeah so let's take a quick break and then we will head into the actual review Hey, we are back. We are back. Hopping right Hopping into story in. and originality out of 10%. Out of 10. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, I think that the story here is, it's a very simple story. Um, but I think that it's, it's you know, he's an intriguing character. He's a very interesting character to follow around. Um, it's it's It feels very different from other kind of slice of life films and also uh other music films um Mm -hmm. like this is less about um the music almost and more about him as a person uh as the name uh of the film would imply inside lewin davis uh and i kind of like that because you still get all the original uh songs and stuff and you get the music aspects of it um but mm-hmm. you're focused more on telling the story of the character and seeing his nuances and seeing him develop and his growth. Uh, whereas, you know, the the more yeah. popular films, say, like, I don't know, Rocketman. I mean, they're based off real people, obviously. Uh, but they're kind of almost... Right. I mean, okay, Rocketman's a bad example. But I feel like in general, the music... Yeah, Rocketman's a natural musical. F- focus more on, like, yeah. music... Uh, than the people like bohemian rhapsody or something uh i think that it works um it's very interesting uh and you do you want to see him succeed and even though you kind of know he won't um and even by the end when you like know he's given up you just gotta feel for the guy because he's got a he's got the right idea you know (laughs) he's got personality he's got heart he's got soul um so you want to just a bit of a asshole but that's okay yeah yeah, um, right. <laughs> he it, this i i really like this film i'm i this is the thing i like about this podcast we i get to you know watch new movies but i also get to rewatch films that i most likely probably wouldn't rewatch. um and this is one of those films and i really liked rewatching this film because i feel like i got a very like new look on this movie and a new vibe to it because i mean i don't know I was reading into it more. I was analyzing it. And I think the first time I watched it, I was just like kind of bored. Um, Cause I don't know. I was just taking that face value. And I think this film is very like deep and moving and um, it's like, yeah, I agree with you. It's a very good slice of life kind of film. And it does it, you know, in a pretty nice runtime and uh, it keeps itself entertaining throughout. I think it gives us like, a solid amount of like backstory that we're able to really feel for this this guy mm-hmm. and get on his side even though you know he might not be the nicest person because at the end of the day yeah this this is over the course of like three or four days so he's just he's not in the best headspace at this moment in time he's depressed um you know his like best friend just killed himself he uh he also just found out that he has a two-year-old baby somewhere living in the world yeah um and then you know carrie mulligan is gonna go get an abortion i think there's yeah. definitely an element that he he's uh, a little bit jealous of justin timberlake um mm-hmm. and yeah i mean they're, and, they're, he's just he's not living his best life at the moment and i think that makes sense why he has these outbursts and these yeah. you know and and what i really yeah. like about the boldness of this story is like this is a very sad movie and i mean the, this character, Lewin Davis, he never once has, like, a, a victory. He never has, like, a win in the whole movie. You never get to see him have any of his work pay off, or you never yeah. get to see him yeah. succeed, really, at anything he does, which I think is yeah. a really interesting way to do a movie because, you know, that's really never how it goes. 
I mean, totally. Most I mean, of the time, even if goes. you have that for two hours, he he'll he'll win at the end. But no, nah, this film, he literally yeah. never once has anything truly good happen to him. Uh, which yeah, is, you know, it's I, I was actually <laughs> I was looking at like reviews of this film. Critics love this movie; like they eat it up. Yeah, critics oh, yeah. love it. Audience reviews are like very fifty fifty. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, it's and most of I was, the Coen yeah, Brothers I mean, fans saying it's underrated. And oh, I think this is a very underrated film, um, mm-hmm. although not critics wise, because critics, I was looking at a lot like best movies of the decades. This was making all of the top 50 films of the decade lists. Um, but yeah, I think as far as like audience goes and just the general public, this is a film that really kind of went under the radar. Um, and I, I hope more people watch it because it's a really beautiful film. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, let's move into beginning. We gotta give the scores out first. Of five. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's true. Um, <laughs> I, gave I gave it an eight. I gave it an eight out. Of, yeah, me too. I gave yeah. it an eight out of ten. Um, solid, but just nothing like insane. Uh, okay, yeah. beginning out of five. Let me just say I love like how this the film opening opens. Shot. I think it's just a beautiful <laughs> opening shot. Oh yes. Um, one of the best Ro- opening remind, shots. Does it remind you of any any other film? <laughs> yeah, it does remind me a bit of something that possibly uh, <laughs> Lucas and I made. Um, I don't know if you based that. On I totally this movie. did. I totally did. Nice. I, was like, <laughs> I totally. You watch it for inspiration. Shot. Yeah, one hundred. I was like, before we did it. Okay, what we're talking about is we made like a boy band short film when we were like grade nine or something um, yeah but i was like watching a bunch of like quote unquote band films to get inspiration and i watched this movie um and i was like damn that's a good opening shot so then we opened our movie with a shot of the microphone um, and it was nowhere near as good <laughs> nowhere near as good but uh, it is such it's such a nice shot and i love how it just kind of like moves over to reveal him singing into the microphone it's a really beautiful song. I think it's actually I, I my favorite the song in the song. entire. Oh yeah. I think it's my favorite song in the entire movie. Um, I love that they got Oscar really... Isaac to actually sing and learn the songs too, and not yeah, dumb. yeah. Like that was great. Um, He's a great singer too. He's got a he nice is. voice. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it, and it starts with a bang. Honestly, it's like a great opening to this yeah. character. You kind of get a glimpse great. of that he might not be the most stable with his interaction with the bar owner, uh, who's like, oh, you you were crazy last night or whatever. You get that glimpse of it. And then he goes into the back. He gets punched in the face. So, like, it's a very chaotic, a lot of information thrown at you start of a film, which I love mm-hmm. because those tend to be the best beginnings, not the slow setup beginnings. Be- beginnings that just, like, get you into the film right away, and then they do some setup. And this film mm-hmm. does that really well. Um, yeah, because the first 10 minutes of this film is very, like, you know, just getting into it. And then they have a bit of setup. But, yeah, I like that they chose to start with this and not, you know, not set up. Yeah, and I also like that they start with the song to let you know that you are going to be watching, like, multiple two-minute long performances. Uh, you're not just mm-hmm. going to, like, hear snippets of the singing. No, you're going to be, like... Uh, you know, spending some time listening and just, you know, yeah, listening to his music, uh, which is, I think, great character development, honestly, if you can do it through the songs he's written. I like that they give, like, they just film the whole song. Like, a lot of movies that have music, they'll, like, do 30 seconds of a song and then cut to a next scene. Exactly. I like that they just let the songs play out and let, like, all of the emotion develop on his face as he's singing. And exactly. if you, like, you got if you listen to the lyrics of these songs they're very they're also very like symbolic of what's happening to him during the film like the lyrics yeah. are very powerful obviously that's, he's written that's these what songs I'm saying. Uh, it's so, so they're very it's connected so cool. to his life mm-hmm. um yeah it's it's a beautiful opening song um yeah i mean i i think this is a fantastic beginning um i gave it a four out of five it's not quite uh top tier for me but yeah i gave really it a four, out of, five also. four out of five Cause it's not like that entertaining mm-hmm. per se. Cause I mean, it's uh, you know, got the song at the start, but yeah, no, yeah, no, it's four out of five. It's very good. It's very, very good. Yeah. 
Okay, moving on to ending out of five. I I love this ending. I really do. Dude. I mean, the f- the fact that I give the beginning a four or five, but it's literally the beginning again in different um, perspectives and with yeah. added like added emotional value. And dude, I just love that ending of him like crawling to the side of the building, looking off and saying like au revoir, and then the movie ends. I think it's a really beautiful ending. Yeah, and I really like how they tell you that the beginning of this film was the ending because it is basically the beginning of the film is the ending so you start with the beginning and then you go back to him getting out of bed and kind of living through the week and then you go through it and then you get back to the end of the beginning scene which is the ending and he plays the song again the same stuff rolls out um and you get what all the conversations are about and all that stuff but you know, yeah, there's him different being crazy. Like, last night was him heckling. Yeah, the ha- person he gets beat up woman. because heckler wife, you know, yeah, kind of thing. <laughs> and I really like that shadow figure that beats him up. It's like kind of reminiscent mm-hmm. of like Sam Elliott in The Big Lebowski. Oh, yeah. um, I actually love this ending. It was when I went into this film, pretty much the only thing I remembered because it had a pretty big impact on me the first time I watched it. And it did again on yeah. rewatch. I mean, it's it's just a very cool ending. I love the end with the beginning kind of thing, almost like uh, like a Pulp Fiction type thing. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I I really don't know how much there is to say. We kind of already did analysis about you know what his character mm-hmm. would get after the ending. Um, that kind of thing. So all I, I really think it's the perfect level is, of ambiguous too. It's like it's not. Yeah, too, exactly. It doesn't tell you. Um, you know, oh, he he quits music, but you know, you yeah. can you can infer what he did for yourself. Um, and I also really like the second song he sings, which he didn't sing at the start. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a just great song. more upbeat, but also like very like emotionally raw. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I gave it a five out of five. I gave it full marks for it. The interesting. Ending. I gave it a four percent. It's definitely a high four. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I just didn't like it yeah. as much, I guess, but I totally respect the five. Yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. Great, great ending. Okay. Uh, screenplay and dialogue out of eight. I think this is a really great screenplay, Me and too. I think the dialogue in this film is top tier dialogue. The dialogue I is think... super funny in a very <laughs> dark so, manner. It's... Yeah, but, exactly. It's like it's this perfect mix of drama, comedy, and just like pure darkness into the mm-hmm. dialogue. And it's like the the thing about this film is and I think the main reason why audience reviews are very fifty fifty is you really have to get Cohen Brothers' sense of humor to exactly. um, find this film funny. Because if you don't get their sense of humor, you're just gonna take this film as like a kind of slice of life drama that's kind of depressing. You gotta you gotta um, laugh at that dark irony. Um, yeah you gotta exactly. laugh at that at that character's like inadvertently you know maybe mentioning his mm-hmm. friend's suicide that really affects him and that character doesn't yeah. know you know you, you just yeah. got to be able to laugh at the character of lewin davis when he's when he's you know totally in a sad moment it, it's it's very like similar to fargo sense of humor in this mm-hmm. like in extremely dark and grim kind of atmosphere and yet there's something just funny about the characters you're watching. Yeah. Um, I actually think Carrie Mulligan and Oscar Isaac, uh, their scenes together are hilarious. Oh, yeah. I think Carrie totally. Mulligan, Carrie Mulligan's dialogue is so funny in this movie. Um, and yeah, I, I, I think dialogue is top tier in this movie. Screenplay wise, I think it's really good screenplay. It's uh, I think it's that's the entertaining. screenplay structure is really, really tight and super solid. Yeah. Like, I is. think that the way the important scenes kind of fall exactly on the thirds of the film is just it's just it's just great it ends up super great like his performance in chicago is exactly like two-thirds of the way through the movie right um where he gets told you should just go back to having a partner um like i don't know i think that this film act structure is just super solid um and the dialogue is super great too and I mean, it's a tight movie. It's only yeah. like an hour and forty-five minutes. Uh, mm-hmm. I think that all totally. the scenes are written in pretty solid. Like I don't really think anything was, you know, filler or excess. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I think that this is 
one of the funniest movies we've seen so far for sure yeah screenplay dialogue i gave it a seven out of eight i think it's a really solid screenplay beautifully yeah. crafted dialogue i just think there are some moments that lag a little bit and definitely some slower moments that i felt could have been picked up a bit but other than that seven out of eight yeah i gave it a seven out of eight also super super solid uh yeah yeah soundtrack time out of seven soundtrack i mean big, it's a great big part of this movie yeah i wouldn't like yeah. listen to it's any a, of the songs beautiful soundtrack. per se uh but i feel like when you write songs that are like so personally written for the character you've created like i just got to give big points um totally you know, to actually spend the time I mean, to the... write good songs that also like reflect what's yeah. happening in the character's life it's just it's brilliant <laughs> it's really great yeah i think the music is really powerful yeah it's it's really well made music and it's like i i never thought i liked folk music well i don't i don't i wouldn't listen to folk music but i don't know i there's something i love about the music in this film um it's just so emotionally driven and just beautiful and it's also not like raw folk music like like legit raw folk music is kind of like what that woman was singing at the bar at the end like that's yeah. like yeah yeah really raw this, folk. Like, i mean this folk feels music like bob dylan you know yeah his folk music has a bit more of like an indie alt vibe mm-hmm. to it it's not like hardcore folk and i like that a lot i like indie rock i like the vibes of these uh kind of rock ballad type acoustic feel to all these songs i listen to mm-hmm. a couple of them because they're just like really beautiful really uh just like fantastic lyrics if you actually read the lyrics they're like so powerful i mean Um, the first isaac songs are actually just like traditional folk songs but there are i I think like 70 percent of the songs are written for this film yeah yeah they they it's the same guy who did the music for oh brother where art thou but Mm -hmm. they got to come write the music for this film and I think the soundtrack yeah. of Oh Brother Where Art That was really great too. Uh, yeah, similar kind of vibe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, the, the music really crafts this film. It really is a huge portion of this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I gave it a 7 out of 7. Same here. I mean, it'd just be a crime. Anything else? I'd, I'd like wouldn't listen to the album, but yeah, I mean, it's just, it's really yeah. great music. And it's, I mean, without it, the film would be, you know, that much worse. So, yeah, 7 out of 7. Yeah. Uh, okay, production design, uh, out of 6. Now, the production design is subtle in this movie, but as mm-hmm. I was watching it, I was realizing that's actually really important, the production design in this movie. This is our first film we've watched. Actually, that's not true in Glorious Bastards. Is, but this this was uh, one of those movies that it's based in a different time era. Based yeah. Based in the 60s. Mm-hmm. So... I was like, I was thinking, I was like, there isn't much production design in the movie. And then I was like, oh, wait. Yeah, there is. Literally yeah, like, every street scene, they had to build car. those houses. Yeah. yeah. I was like, all those houses are obviously on a set because there's no houses that look like that in 2013. It's all built to look like the 60s. I was like, oh, wait, there's a ton of production design in this movie. I mean, yeah. Uh, even when he's walking like, downtown. Cars, the train cars yeah. have been made to look like you know 1960s Mm -hmm. new york's uh subways yeah all the cars on the street too that's like in traffic passing by Mm -hmm. um i actually don't know how they did all of this with only a 10 million dollar budget because i like especially like the downtown scenes where you've got like these buildings that i i I mean probably most of them are cgi but there's definitely some buildings there that they had to like build and he's obviously on a set and it's like i mean i feel like most of that budget is for production design uh because yeah. I mean, none of these actors were big at the time justin timberlake was probably their most expensive uh person yeah and i mean yeah uh, I well mean, and john all, goodman yeah yeah i i don't know i i don't know how they pulled it off but they did it <laughs> okay that's the important thing yeah <laughs> they did it they did and, it and uh, the costumes too costumes are great costumes detailed are great yeah um personal it's impressive very impressive with the budget they had and i actually really like that the production design isn't like in your face either because like a lot of like period pieces or films that are based in a different time era 
the directors like to really shove it in your face like with lots of like uh pop culture remarks to like remind you you're in the 60s like you can watch this film and you kind of just forget that it's based in the 60s i mean yeah. yeah there's moments where you see stuff the phones the like stuff not the phones but stuff they're using like that you're like oh yeah this is based in the 60s but um like it just it doesn't feel like it's super like in your face it's not like once upon a time in hollywood where it's like constant reminders of the time era you're in yeah it's just kind of subtle and nice and i really like that because you don't see that much in these kind of movies um Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i mean i don't think the production design is quite like insanely impressive but you know if you really look into it it's pretty cool and pretty cool how much they were able to do with the budget they had i gave it a five out of six yeah, same here. Totally agree. Five out of six. Really, really solid production design. Uh, yeah, it's really impressive what they could do. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to location selection out of six. Uh, I mean, I, I think that there's the some great locations selections. in this film. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't think there's a location I didn't like in this movie. I mean, every bar, cafe, restaurant is like so nice. Um. I mean, the restaurant they go to, obviously, him and John Goodman, it's like, oh, my God, the bathroom that he goes into? Yeah. With the teal walls and the teal bricks, and he's in this, like, teal shirt, very, like, analogous color theory vibes. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. I loved it. Um, Yeah, the restaurant, the white floors, the red chair, the black walls, it's, like, insanely good. Um, And, like, even just the roads while they're driving, like, the gas station. Yeah. In the middle of the country. Oh, yeah. Just get that like big... when he gets out of his car to go hitchhike that mm-hmm. is like such a beautiful location with all that fog yeah some great wide There's shots a, I, I love the location the selection i don't there wasn't a location in this film that i felt was lazy i felt like every location yeah. was really like perfectly chosen and also like represented the time era really well they didn't just like pick a look they they were really like focused on what what locations they were choosing like that all the gas stations look like in the had 60s. to be dressed up <laughs> yeah or just found i guess yeah totally mm-hmm. um and also all the apartments he goes yeah. and stays at like because he stays at a lot of apartments in this film because he's sleeping on everyone's couches mm-hmm. i think they're all really really cool and i mean couches. adam drivers i forgot to mention especially. that during production design those couches have personality yeah each one he sleeps on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Adam Driver's apartment in particular for me, like that hallway, that very, very narrow small hallway. Small hallway, yeah. I love that location. I, I read somewhere yeah. that the Coen brothers bumped into a cab driver who was living at one of their old apartments in New York, and they actually got to use it as a location for this movie. I don't know which apartment it oh, was, nice. but one of them is the Coen brothers' old apartment. So that's an Easter egg <laughs> for you. <laughs> I gave location yeah, selection um, a five out of six also. Uh, right. Super solid locations. Yeah. Like Lucas said, there's not a bad location in this whole film. Yeah, I agree. I gave it five out of six. There just isn't that location that like wowed me. Like actually there were, but like it wasn't quite like, you know. I mean, when we have like, oh my God, films out here like atonement, you just can't be given out those those free yeah. sixes <laughs> you can, without but, the uh, beautiful landscapes <laughs> yeah yeah solid five out of six for location selection um okay let's take a quick break and then we will hop into cinematography okay all right back at it we are back cinematography back for cinematography out of ten mm uh i love the look of this film yeah me too got a great look to it uh we were saying earlier that this film kind of looks like no country for old men with that very gritty green kind of color grade yeah very like Uh, desaturated and like the oranges and browns are like the only saturated color uh which not only looks cool but i feel like it also puts you in the time period really well this film almost just looks kind of old in a way it looks a bit grainy like there's a, some film grain and i mean this film also just has some really great framing some really great wides uh some cool tracking shots uh of you know of him like walking 
around. <laughs> yeah, I, I love that shot there's no, there's where no he's like walking shot. through the snow after being rejected, and it's like this yeah. dolly shot. It's just beautiful. Um, I really like the depth of field used in this movie. His like different angle lenses that he uses, um, very particular for the scenes he's in. The lighting in this movie mm-hmm. is, I mean. Mm. I think this might be the best lit film we've done so far. The lighting is so good in this film. Like, usually in movies, I love the outdoor scenes because I think they're shot better. In this movie, every indoor scene, I was like, wow. Because there's just something so dark and smoky and foggy about all the indoor scenes that are really beautiful and really work well with the color grade. Um yeah, I mean, okay, so this this guy Bruno, he he just came off of Haplid Prince <laughs> with a two hundred and fifty million dollar budget. I mean, the fact that he he did Haplid Prince, which again is a beautiful movie with two hundred and fifty. I love how you're referring to him like that. <laughs> this guy Bruno, two hundred and fifty million dollars. Right, so this guy Bruno, right? <laughs> and he used that money to make yeah. a beautiful film, but then he comes in to this ten million dollar film and does just as good of a job with literally a 25th of his, of the budget he had for Harry Potter. And that's impressive. That's, like, really impressive, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, Super impressive. Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's much else to say. I gave it a 9 out of 10. I think this is really good cinematography. If it was just... I, I just Same think here. it needed to be a bit more... Just a bit more movement and a bit more experimental for me to give it that 10 out of 10. But, uh... Yeah. It, it's very solid. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, it also doesn't, like, look uh, almost like the way all the other kind of Hollywood movies look. Like, it looks unique. It still looks like a yeah. like a Coen Brothers movie at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Still got a good style to it. So, yeah. Yep. Uh, let's move on to editing at 8%. Now, there are fade transitions. There's one. Uh, in this film. I think there's two. Two, okay. I think there's two. I only noted one. <laughs> I always <laughs> notice them now. I always <laughs> notice them. I like that they don't like include uh, too much of his journey on the way back. I guess, mm-hmm. uh, or you know, they don't really include a lot of the unnecessary movement in this film. I feel like yeah, they definitely uh, except you could argue on the road trip on the way there. Yeah. But I mean, I like mm-hmm. that scene so. But, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think overall they keep the scenes tight. And in the scenes where uh, he's performing, they just like to hold it on one shot of him performing yeah, for a really, really long like. time. which I really like. Not too his, much, like, reaction uh, or shots. Not too much. Mm-hmm. Just, like, And when they do it. cut to the reaction, they, like, they hold on that for a while, too, yeah. so you can get the emotion. Totally. Uh, um, and I just really like it. It gives yeah, a I lot agree. of breathing room for you to just sit back and watch the song and not be mm-hmm. distracted by any editing yeah it kind of feels just like you're in the, the room you're like watching this concert which i like um mm-hmm. editing yeah i mean i think it's a well edited film i think the biggest thing for me with the editing that stands out is the sound design the sound design is absolutely gorgeous in this film um and yeah. i think that they really captured what live music actually sounds like um because mm-hmm. a lot of films... The nuances yeah, of the guitar totally. and fingers. A lot of the films that use uh, live music performances, uh, not musicals, but actually like live music performances that are meant to be live, it feels very fake. It feels dubbed. It feels polished. <clears throat> Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> yeah, Bohemian Rhapsody is a big example. <laughs> you, you used their polished uh album like their their produced songs for the live performances bruh um yeah. <laughs> but it's like they're there the, it just feels real and even though yeah obviously he's lip syncing to pre-recorded music it doesn't sound like it there's still this like good white noise sound level of like scratching of the guitar rustling and of he's people the person who's yeah and he's it singing it too. It just, it sounds so. really good and it sounds real. And that's something that really impresses me because usually movies don't put a lot of effort into the actual like singing element of mu- movies. They like, it's just too polished. And this film, I really like that. Mm-hmm. It just felt like real and raw, um, which really works for it, folk it's, music. It feels too. real, but it's not, it doesn't sound like bad. No, it doesn't it, sound it, bad. It feels real, but it still sounds amazing. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I gave editing a six out of eight. I think it's really solid um yeah just like nothing it doesn't is super really impressive. do much to get to the next level yeah yeah 
But yeah, six out of eight for me also. We're agreeing on this one. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Um, okay, acting out of ten. Uh, I, w- I was surprised. I was reading some stuff, and a lot of people have ranked this Oscar Isaac's performance as one of the best performances of the decade. Um, like in pretty much all the top ten critics lists for best performance. Hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't really say that with how many great performances there were, but I think it's a really good performance. Um, yeah. In fact, I mean, I think that a lot of the performances here are really, really good. Uh, I think that in particular, Carrie Mulligan and uh, Oscar Isaac are great. I think Justin Timberlake's okay. <laughs> he, he doesn't, doesn't really have a lot do to much, do, though. but yeah, he, he's, he's yeah. fine. Adam John Driver's Goodman's fine. funny. Yeah, I, uh, I actually like Justin Timberlake yeah. and Adam Driver because they're just like they're not in it very much, but they're just like cool side characters and like good com- comedic relief. Um, yeah, I yeah. mean Oscar Isaac is I so mean, good in this movie. I think that this he's like he's yeah. playing this like <laughs> dick, <laughs> but he's also like super lovable at the same time. Um, mm-hmm. And. Yeah, I mean, that scene where he, like, he's at the abortion clinic and he realizes that he he might have, like, a two-year-old kid somewhere, like, out of town. Like, his face in that scene is just, like, top-tier acting. So sad. And the thing is, Oscar Isaac, he doesn't have, like, a huge meltdown in this performance. I mean, he has a little one. But, like, it's, like, it's all these, like, nuances of his performance in his eyes and it makes you feel so emotional. He doesn't have to start breaking down in tears or yelling for you to get emotional. It's just this like little subtle stuff. Um, I was listening to an interview he gave and he basically said that when he was filming this movie, he didn't like, he didn't act it as a comedy. He just, he did, he went for it as dramatic as possible. And then he was able to get like this ironic comedy out of it. And I think that's a really strong choice yeah. cuz that's kind of I feel like if he played into the comedy, it wouldn't be as funny cuz the comedy comes from this dark ironic side of the character. Um and that works really well. Mm-hmm. I mean the scene where he's like all of his singing scenes are really good, but the scene where he sings to his dad in that care home, his like oh, his face that tears. one tear running down <laughs> his eye, that's like just a beautiful God, that's I beautiful performance fantastic that was, that was my crying uh that, that was my crying um scene for this movie um yeah and then i also really like carrie mulligan i think she's really funny in this movie um yeah carrie mulligan solid makeup was really good on her too i almost didn't recognize her the first time i watched it uh yeah she, yeah good i mean her hair is just different yeah too, her hair is very different but yeah yeah i mean i think that overall these are really solid performances especially oscar isaac Mm -hmm. you know now that i'm thinking about it all that he did for the film or like you know his overall performance i think i almost agree with top 10 performances of the decade maybe at like 10 yeah no yeah i mean it doesn't Uh, but i mean i can't really think off the top of my head like all the other great mine is jared leto and matthew mcconaughey dallas buyers club my first two uh yeah i mean oh god i can't even oh no uh, i'd put walking phoenix for the master up there too yeah i honestly put philip seymour hoffman yeah. for the master totally i put both of them maybe jake gyllenhaal a couple times and like nightcrawler nocturnal animals mm, nightcrawler sure yeah okay yeah. well i gave acting a nine out of ten i think it's top tier uh yeah, same. Yeah, nine out of, nine 10. out of ten. Really amazing performances. Not really a weak performance from any of the main cast. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Okay. Entertainment, entertainment value, value out of ten. I mean, yeah. Uh, I yeah. mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's a very chill movie. Yeah. Uh, I, I I had a very relaxing time while watching it. There's no big like. I mean, there's a lot. There's some yelling, but like, there's no like huge argument. Yeah. Uh, I mean there is, but I mean it feels like it doesn't hold a lot of weight. It feels like they've been there before and they're just constantly arguing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's really just, it's just a sad movie, and I mean, it's it's almost like a, a sad comfort movie, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> like, totally. when you're feeling 
a bit melancholy. You're, you know, you're in that kind of mood. You just want to yeah see something sad. It's, and just watch. Yeah, this. it has a very melancholy feel. It's low it. key, very low key. But I mean, it's it's definitely not what I would consider like an entertaining film. Yeah, I mean, I think. Uh, if you don't like it folk, holds, it holds my attention the whole time. I'm yeah, never bored. I agree. If you don't like folk but music, you're not I, gonna like this movie. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think that that's a true. big thing is like, yeah, I mean, even though it is slow, it's pretty short, so it keeps you like captivated the entire time. There weren't any moments where I was like bored. Even upon rewatch, I was kind of like I was still into the movie. Um, it's definitely yeah. like it's not not. I agree with you. Not a lot happens. It's definitely on the slower side, but if you're in the mood to watch that kind of film, um, I think it does the job, and it's really beautiful to look at. Um, great performances. And great music. Yeah, and if you like if the if music, you're going to watch something with the music like in it. it, too. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah, so, it's, I mean, it can't, it's not like top-tier entertainment, because it's not. It, it's just it's not that kind of it movie. It just isn't. But, um, I mean, for me, it, even upon rewatch, it kept me... I was into it, and I actually think I enjoyed this movie yeah. more upon rewatch. And I feel this th- like this is one of those movies that I think grows. I definitely did. Yeah, I think this is one of those movies that grows on you, and that like upon rewatch you kind of like get more from it. And it kind of it, it's mm-hmm. just one of those movies that's going to grow with you. Um, and it it's better with time. It's like aged wine. Yeah. Um, yeah, I gave it an eight out of ten for entertainment value. I gave it an eight out of ten also. Nice. Uh. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely by no means boring. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, overall technical achievement. Uh, you know, I think that technically this movie is uh, really, really solid. Uh, and I think the cinematography in particular is great. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, it's not, it doesn't do anything fancy really with its technology. Um, and I mean, it's just not on the level as some of the 14s I've given. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's got good lighting, uh, good sound design, um, and pretty solid cinematography, but it's just, there's nothing, like, super, like, impressive or groundbreaking. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, mm-hmm. that's, it, it's a pretty easy 13 out of 15 for me. Yeah, super solid 13 for me also. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. I think well, uh, uh, that kind of wraps it up for our review, so our we'll review. take a quick break. Come back. Tally our percentages and then spin, spin that wheel, the wheel. and see what we're Ooh. getting next week. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. We are We've back. tallied up our final percentages. I gave Inside Lewin Davis an 86%. Um, much higher than I originally thought this movie was going to score. But mm-hmm. uh, I don't know. I really enjoyed watching this movie again. And I think it truly is just like a authentically beautiful mu- movie, um, and I would rank it as you know definitely in my like top three, four uh, Coen Brother films. Uh, as far as I haven't seen all of them, but as far as the yeah. ones I've watched, it's definitely up there for me. I overall gave it an eighty-five percent. Uh, the only thing that we difference our difference was the ending. Uh, yeah, so I mean. Mm-hmm. I would. I think I would consider this probably my fifth favorite Coen Brothers. No, I'd say sixth favorite Coen Brothers movie. Was it? Um, was, what's the ranking for you? Okay. Okay. We got Inside Lou and Davis. Then we got Oh Brother Where Art Thou. Then mm-hmm. Barton Fink. Then mm-hmm. Fargo. Then No Country for Old Men. Then The Big Lebowski. Yeah. Uh, okay. But I mean, I, I think go... that like this and Oh Brother and Barton Fink are all really close. Because yeah. I think that Fargo, No Country, and Big Lebowski are like a solid top three that are like a bit yeah, I would, above everything. I else. would go No Country, Big Lebowski. Uh, I honestly don't know if I like Fargo more than this movie. Yeah, I mean, I just I'm a Steve Buscemi kind of guy. You feel me? And a wood okay, chipper yeah, kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Well, that gives us an average of an 85.5, which means there is not an 85.5, which is nice. Which means that this movie is better than Good Will Hunting. Seventh place. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Honestly? Okay. Honestly, sure. (laughs) Why not? I don't mind. Inside (laughs) Lewin Davis coming in seventh place. 
pretty big right there seventh place yeah i mean um, i think that right this movie underneath is just very, like solid for our like ranking system there's not one category that's weak it's very solid yeah. across the board it's a movie that people can i think it's a very relatable film i think lou and davis yeah. even though maybe there's we don't want to admit it all the time him. there's something relatable about him and about the way he just feels about the world um yeah okay seventh place inside lulan davis right underneath raging bull just over top of goodwill hunting by 0.5 percent um Mm -hmm. let's spin that wheel and see what our 20th film is going to be yeah exciting stuff big 2-0 uh and i'd also like to point out that another coen brothers film film will be going on the wheel after we get a movie this week no country for old men is going to be on the wheel after this I'm amazed that it okay, wasn't on there in the first place. Okay, let's pull a quick time player. But... Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't have any uh, expectations for the wheel this week. I'm just... Yeah, kinda... I'm, I'm, I'm open. Yeah. I'm ready for it to give me what it feels I need to see. Yeah, you know what? Sure. I'm down for some artsy stuff. I'm down for some big budget stuff. I'm down for whatever. Well, we'll find out. Uh, we are spinning the wheel in three, two, one. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, oh, this is kind of funny. Um, ben and I were talking about this movie right before the podcast. We have landed on silence. Ooh, ooh, this is this is pretty hype. Uh, uh, you've never seen I've, this movie. I've right? ne- I haven't seen Silence. Okay, no, um, I haven't seen it. I, I love this movie so much. I think it's one of Scorsese's best uh like modern day films that he's made is a it is a ride of a film um but yeah i'm really excited for you to watch this because i think this is a movie you're gonna really like damn i'm looking at this description right now and i'm actually so hyped uh (laughs) lucas and i have always talked about wanting to make a film like in japan uh, yeah. I just think the landscape oh, and stuff would be cool, and it looks film. like this film is set mm, in Japan. It is, so yeah. I'm hyped. Uh, uh, yeah, read the plot summary. Okay, Rodriguez and Harupe, two Catholic missionaries, travel to Japan in search of their missing mentor Ferreira, who is believed to have been promoting Catholicism by going against the law. So. I mean, I get the idea. But, Basically, uh, it's that yeah, uh, I mean, in Japan at that time, it's like uh, Catholicism is outlawed. It's you can illegal. only be Buddhist. You can yeah. only be Buddhist. Um, but yeah, yeah this right. film is... Mm-hmm. Andrew Garfield is insanely good in this movie. Um, Liam yeah. Neeson, Adam Liam Driver. Liam Neeson, Adam Driver. I'm really excited to rewatch this film. This film, I will admit, it's, it is intense it is very intense it's long too Um, it's two hours and 45 minutes yeah it's well yeah it's a scorsese film he he went for it with this movie um Mm -hmm. definitely not cinematography you gotta have from uh, a gut to watch this movie because there's some really disturbing stuff that happens but it is a i can handle it i can yeah 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 yeah. it's not (laughs) that bad just uh rodrigo prieto is the cinematographer he's worked on uh Brokeback Mountain and The Wolf of Wall Street mm-hmm. and Argo. Yeah. I like those movies, so hopefully got some good cinematography. I mean, I'm just reading that because it, it was nominated for uh, Best Cinematography at the Oscars. I mean, uh, this film, you, you don't have to do much. The locations are just like, I mean, top nice. tier. Uh, yeah, okay, I'm excited. I've wanted to rewatch this film for a while. That's our episode on Inside Lou and Davis. Yeah, thanks for listening. Tune in next week for our 20th film martin scorsese's silence it's our second scorsese film nice totally different very from different Bull. very different um <laughs> yeah yeah no italians in this one yeah so no. uh yeah thanks for listening and uh stay tuned for that see you next monday and also a oscars reaction in Ooh. a week and a half yeah oh yeah oscar reaction is coming out pretty soon so uh stay tuned yeah. for that and next monday we got silence <laughs>
Thank you for listening to Slightly Qualified Film Students. Make sure to tune in next week for a new film discussion and review. Our theme song is Slightly Sexy by Thompson Springs. Make sure to subscribe and leave us a like. Send us feedback and comments as well as your thoughts on the film. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at S underscore Q underscore F underscore S. If you would like to send us a question or a comment for next week's episode, you can email us at sqfilmstudents at gmail.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you all next week. Bye.